Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We have a selection of different items in this mailbag video, but before we get started I would like to mention that packages started flowing in around 1st of May and things are moving, certainly not as before, but there is some movement at least and I hope you guys are benefiting from the same improvement uh, where you are located. I'm gonna start with this multifunctional charger from Litokawa. Its model number is 402. And I actually have another one of their chargers. Uh, this is the uh, 500 model number. It's the model with an LCD and the backlight. And I've been using this one for the past few years. It's been working great, but I needed a second one to increase the number of cells I can charge at the same time. So I picked a similar model this time. Uh, but it has LED indicators instead of the LCD. This type of charger with uh, LED indicators could be good enough for you. It's certainly good enough uh, for me. I mostly just plug in my cells and let them sit in there for a few hours before I return and take them out. So I don't usually check all of the info available on that screen anyway. This model takes a micro USB input 5 volts 2 amps. So that's 10 watts and it can be distributed uh, amongst the different uh, charging slots in uh, different ways. Uh, you can have just one cell at 2 amps or you can divide that over 4 cells uh, and something in between as well. It can charge uh, nickel metal hydrate, lithium ion and lithium ion phosphate. And the battery slots are uh, universal so it can hold a bunch of different cells in here that are uh, mentioned on the packaging. I ordered this particular uh, charger from Banggood because it was in their EU warehouse so it got delivered in like a week but you can probably get it cheaper if you're willing to wait one or two months for delivery from China. But not everything is slow. If you have to order some professional high quality PCBs with fast turnaround time and quick delivery via express courier, you should check out the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. They even offer special PCBs with aluminum substrate or flex PCBs. So check them out. The link is in the description. My next item is a temperature sensor and this one is designed specifically to sense the battery of a battery while charging. You can see the plastic holder is designed so that you can attach it to a uh, cylindrical type battery cell. And this 3-pin connector I believe is compatible with some models of battery chargers but uh, I didn't get this to use with a particular charger so I don't care about the uh, this connector. But for another project I'm working on I need something like this and um, I can't share those uh, details with you yet. It's still a work in progress but you will learn more about it when I have the first prototype ready. I'm interested if inside this there will be like a simple thermistor or if uh, it's a uh, digital type sensor with like a one wire interface. So I see some screws on this uh, plastic case. So I think I'm gonna try to take it apart now and see what type of sensor they use inside. Okay, so I think we also have a couple of uh, magnets in here. Yep, these are magnets. So uh, these would probably help with uh, keeping this stuck to uh, a battery cell that has some kind of uh, metal in its shield and it appears I was wrong this is actually an LM35 temperature sensor this has a voltage output which is directly proportional to the temperature it's something like 10 millivolts per degree centigrade it's still usable it's just not what I thought it was and you can certainly replace this with one of the digital sensors because they come in the same uh, style package. Next I have some thermoplastic beads also known as polymorph pellets and this is basically a type of plastic that has a pretty low melting point usually around 60 degrees C so you can put these pellets in some hot water and they will melt and become soft and malleable. This can be useful if you're doing a repair or just trying to model some pieces out of this. When you're finished you can just put the model piece in uh, some cold water and it will solidify again. I've seen people use these for repairs on old instruments, usually the stuff where you can't easily find replacements anymore like a cracked front panel, but it's not a perfect solution. Without low melting point you can't use this stuff anywhere close to a source of heat because it will become soft and lose its shape. 
In those cases, a better alternative would be 3D printing something out of PETG or PLA. As usual, you'll find links for the stuff in the description of the video. My next item is one of these cheap AliExpress deburring tools. I never had one of these before, but I thought I'd give uh, one a try to see if it can be useful. I've mentioned this uh, before, I don't do much metal work here, uh, but occasionally I might drill some holes to fit a potentiometer or a connector on a panel. This tool has a uh, short curved blade, which is supposed to help with uh, deburring surfaces. I'm not sure how well this will hold up over time, but uh, let's give it a quick try. This is a 10 mm aluminum tube and uh, it works rather nicely on the soft materials. You can see those uh, metal shavings that are coming off. So the blade uh, does work for deburring and if the blade ever becomes dull, there are replacement sets available on AliExpress. I think the replacement blades can fit inside the handle and I think you should be able to remove this uh, cap by pressing in these uh, these black locking pins but I haven't been able to do that it's just really uh, stuck on there so maybe that's not the way to open it it's just uh, something that seemed right to do. Next up I have the NAP07 ion chamber smoke sensor and I don't think I plan to use this as a smoke sensor uh, at least not a while ago when I ordered it. I was mostly wanting to have a source of radiation that I could test against a radiation detector at some point. I was thinking I could build one of those classic circuits using a Russian detection tube and build a Geiger counter but I would have nothing to test against so I ordered one of these smoke detectors knowing it contains small amounts of americium 241 which is radioactive and it should make a Geiger counter go crazy if placed right next to the sensor. Also a good source of radioactive material can be old dials with glow-in-the-dark markers. Those will usually contain small quantities of tritium or promethium. So this will have to wait until I build my Geiger counter and uh, will get stored in my lab. There is no associated risk with that because the amount of radiation that escapes more than a few centimeters away from this source is usually lower than the background radiation. Next up I have a short and quite flexible um, 50 centimeters long micro USB cable. There's nothing special about this, it's braided, feels like decent quality, certainly not the best but decent. And it was pretty inexpensive. I need this on my desk and if you remember I'm using a USB 3.0 hub which I got a while ago. It sits on my desk and I use it to connect stuff that's not meant to be permanent. Sometimes I connect development boards and as we know development boards have been slow to catch up on the USB Type-C popularity and so there are still a bunch of uh, them which are using micro USB. Now such a short cable will allow me to connect the dev boards to my computer uh, via that hub without having a long wire that would clutter my desktop. In the attempt to avoid the wire clutter on my microscope stand, I wanted a shorter HDMI cable to go between the camera and the monitor I'm using. And by the way, if you haven't seen the review video of this uh, microscope camera, I will link it on screen right now. I figured a 50 centimeters HDMI cable would do the job and I ordered this one without actually checking or measuring the distance. But after receiving it, I realized it's not going to reach all the way to the monitor port. So I went back to AliExpress and ordered another one, which is 75 centimeters long this time. There is also something I didn't try yet, that is uh, flipping the monitor 180 degrees to have the ports on the other side and then see if I can somehow flip the image from the camera settings or monitor settings. But I would rather prefer to have the ports on the far right side because that gives me more room for inserting uh, power for example which is not always connected. But even so I'm gonna keep this uh, cable. It's probably going to be useful someday for a short HDMI connection. Just a quick mention before moving on to the next item. If you enjoyed these videos click the subscribe button so you won't miss any future uploads. These are some lint free clean room wipes. 
they're really nice i've bought these uh, before and i use them on the workbench whenever i need to wipe a pcb or something similar i just soak these in some flux cleaner or ipa and they work great when I showed these in a previous mailbag, people asked me why I don't buy the Kim wipes that everyone uses. Well, the thing is here in Romania, Kim wipes are not that cheap and when you add in the delivery cost, it starts to make sense ordering these ones from AliExpress if you can wait the two months needed for delivery. So I just stock up on these that it's not a problem for me to wait for their delivery and they're cheaper than the Kim wipes. Also, these are not paper based like the uh, Kim wipes, I believe, are. These uh, feel a bit nicer, they're softer, so I suggest you try these out. You might like them better. Next up, I have this uh, USB to RS-485 adapter. Useful if you want to get your computer to talk to a device over RS-485, like I want the KP184 electronic load to talk to my computer. I reviewed that electronic load in a previous video and I showed it has an RS-485 interface that you can use to send commands to the instrument or get back readings. By the looks of it, this uses an FT232 for the USB interface and I'm pretty sure this is not a genuine chip and so I wonder how the driver is going to react to it. And on the other side we have a Max 485 to do the RS-485 interfacing. But ultimately if I notice any issues with the FT232 uh, I can just remove it using some hot air and solder in a genuine replacement. And it would still be good value because I would get this whole PCB with uh, connectors which are ready to use for not much money. Next item is also for comms. This is an RS-232 TTL converter module and this uses the MAX3232 chip which is the 3 volts variant of the good old popular MAX232 chip. Once again if you have some test gear that features an RS-232 interface you can use something like this to bring those RS-232 signals to TTL levels which you can easily then connect to a microcontroller, an Arduino or maybe uh, with a USB to serial converter chip. This is the second one I buy, the first one stopped working at some point. It's likely the converter chip that stopped working at some point either due to incorrect usage from me or maybe on its own because I expect the chips they use on these to be the cheapest possible replicas. The soldering on this one feels pretty crusty uh, so I might just give it a bit of flux and redo these solder joints. If you look here they haven't even soldered in the, the top row of pins. I really appreciate the support I get from you guys on Patreon even a dollar a month counts and helps keep these mailbag videos coming regularly. I'm interested in hearing if you found something interesting in today's video, if you ordered any of these items, let me know in the comments below and if you'd like to see more mailbag videos, just click here for a playlist of all of my mailbag videos. Thank you for watching, I appreciate your support and I'll see you next time with a new video.